hello and welcome to the show for this week's Fail Race vs. the Community. We will go racing with the Alfa Romeo 155. It's a car that doesn't get used very much in Forza. As much as I like the 155, it is quite awful. The PI system is, just, is not kind to it at all in this game. However, seeing as we were all driving C-Class ones, we were all in exactly the same boat. And we were hoping for some rather good racing, and certainly the opening corners things were going pretty well. A couple of cars. I mean, one car escaped to turn one. There's a red car up ahead here that escaped onto the gravel trap, and we're going almost four wide. In the end, people backing out of it when they realise that uh, four, three wide is is difficult at best. I mean, two wide is difficult at best at the top of the hill. There, four wide just doesn't quite work into that corner. Amazingly, though, everybody made it through, and it was actually a very very clean start with of these vehicles you're up to the hairpin for the first time and there are many cars in a small piece of target a few having to take to the runoff area but uh, yeah it was an absolutely absolutely crazy start in many ways there were just so many cars running close on track i started a fair way down the order some vehicles like this uh, yellow car here were keen to try and make their way up through the order it's a great move around the outside could sweep back into position before they uh, get through that fire chicane. Yeah, around the outside of the top of the hill there is not the easiest of, uh, of places to uh, to get passes done. As I said, I started a fair way down the order, was trying to work my way up, but uh, you get stuck in traffic. You get stuck in traffic quite easily with these races. We're three wide into the hairpin. It's a great dive from the red car to uh, get past the pair of us down there as we are still fighting our way. I've got a better car through the corners but uh, trying to go the long way around here is not quite working. I had to be wary. The blue vehicle was very, very fast through the corners but had absolutely no speed in a straight line as we now head up towards this very, very technical final section. There's not really much I can do at this stage other than follow the uh, follow the cars ahead. <laughs> the red vehicle kind of realises there's a vehicle alongside him, panics and has to try to change direction quickly. And that gives me an opportunity uh, to uh, dive up the inside of him and I knew if I was vaguely within range of that blue car I would have the straight line speed as we go soaring past. It's three wide up ahead, there's cars fighting behind us. It's yeah, a lot was going on. This is one of those first communities where I had a tough job finding where to focus on in the filming because that is just how much action was going on on a track at once. Uh, this midfield group was also perhaps one of the uh, most spectacular. Uh, we I basically fought the entire race. I don't think there was a lap where I wasn't attacking or defending for the entire length of the race as we're now in a big group heading up towards the top of the hill. The uh, sort of brighter purple car tried to make a move in turn one and it didn't work and you end up, when you're in a group like this, you end up losing uh, two positions. He got away with only losing two, could have easily lost three had the red car been that little, little bit closer as, yeah, it's just, it's all go, it's all go in this. Further up towards the front, and it was, yeah, a tad quieter, still not a huge amount. This was the fight over fourth place, as the white and blue car is busy trying to find a way past. Can't quite get the move done, though, at the first corner. White and black car would fend him off. Uh, does a good job, actually, to defend that position, but he's still under increasing threat as we head up towards this very, very fast corner. It is side by side through there. You really don't want to be side by side trying to get through the chicane. It is not the easiest of place to fit two cars wide. They do with a little bit of assistance or in some grass and in the end the white and blue vehicle would pop out the other side just about in front, kind of dives his way to the apex of the corner trying to uh, fend off the vehicle behind and then does get a little bit better run off of that hairpin. I was continuing uh, my my busy session. We did spread out a little bit, also not helped by my lag. I was having some connection problems of my own. I might have bumped a car or two with uh, <laughs> the teleporting orange vehicle. did calm down a little bit towards the end of the race. But uh, yeah, I was having to do my very best defending against uh, the uh, purple Alfa Romeo here. Tried his luck at going around the outside and so on. As you saw, you can. If you can, if you can carry enough speed around the outside of turn one, you'll be on the inside for the second corner. But uh, it's not the easiest of passes necessarily to get done clearly. And when you try for it and, and you get it a little bit wrong, you end up being a little bit slow, and uh, that can uh, can cost you some time, can drop you back, and you know it'll take you perhaps another lap to catch up to get into a right position. White and black car was uh, struggling a little bit for pace, not by a huge amount, mind at this front group, but was gradually being caught 
by the uh, cars behind. The yellow vehicle had a go at the inside into that uh, first quarter again. Not able to make it work. However, has got that bit better run. Does a good cut back through the second corner to get himself alongside of the drag race up the hill and would just get a uh, car's length ahead to be able to uh, fall back in line. Again, another, another brave pass. Good pass around the outside there. You can see how... Again, there's, you know, there's a couple of cars behind uh, fighting. There was just a lot going on in general throughout the field. Not, though, for the leaders. First and second were miles clear of the rest of the field. Far faster cars in terms of lap time and also helped by being towards the front very early on. And you saw the sort of battles that a lot of us were stuck in. <laughs> in the mid-pack and so on. Yeah, when, when you can be running clear of that and you have a faster car in general... Is, is very, very difficult to, uh, to do much about uh, about that one. And second race, and we would head to the Bugatti circuit, a track that not many people particularly like. I'm, I'm not a particular lover of this circuit. However, wanted a little bit of variety, and having had so much fun in the opening race, was hoping that that would continue here. Because these cars are pretty rubbish in terms of being a C-Class car, they're, they're, they're not competitive. Uh, whatsoever, but it does mean that um, because they are not amazingly not amazingly quick, they tend to actually be quite good to drive. You couldn't get very much power in these at all, so everything was basically a handling car, which meant that the uh, racing was some of the best that we've had in a uh, very very long time. In, on the most, I think a couple of cars got a little bit wide, got into a little bit of trouble through that uh, first quarter here at uh, the Bugatti circuit, but it's a notoriously bad corner for turn one accidents and bumps and shunts and so on, but uh, with these, no problems whatsoever. There was still plenty of busyness going on in towards the uh, next corner as we are, the car we're following was uh, trying to find a way past you know, vehicles ahead. You end up getting a little bit overcommitted. You try a move that doesn't quite pan out and then you lose that little bit of speed because everyone's in relatively similar cars uh, out here that, uh, yeah, any loss of, little loss of momentum can be uh, quite problematic. I, once again, didn't have the greatest of uh, starting spots. Found myself a fair way down the order, so plenty of overtaking for me to uh, have to try and do as we run into the uh, back chicane. Tried to get brave going around the outside of a uh, silver car. Couldn't quite make that move work. While well, behind me, there's another vehicle. Purple Alpha goes to the inside, trying to get a pass done. There is a, a poor red car. Got a little bit caught on the inside. We're trying to find a way to uh, rejoin the uh, track as there was all sorts of traffic going on and I'd have to go around the long way around the outside of uh, him to uh, get a position. Once more though the opening laps were proving to be a rather busy time for just about everybody involved. Black and green car was having a big dive up the inside into this uh, corner. The black car would uh, not quite able to keep it on the track. It's uh, yeah a, a it's a difficult corner in many ways, that one. You want to try and get on that power, especially if you're stuck on the outside. You want to try and get on that power as soon as possible. You want to try and carry a nice run onto this uh, this back straight. Got to be careful. The Astro Turf is very, very slippery out there. You really don't want to find yourself fired across the curb. But yeah, green car was uh, looking was looking fast, and as we run out of the back chicane, is uh, having to try and go the longer way around there to blue and orange car. Would able to do it there <laughs> both kind of mug the blue car. The black vehicle trying to get two of the inside, although not quite able to uh, get the move done there. It was, yeah, absolute mayhem at the front, and we wouldn't have the leader escaping away while this uh, white car would held on to the lead for a little while. He was coming under increasing pressure from the uh, vehicles behind and a little bit wide out of the final corner. Is not what you want to do. Got away with it on the most parts. Didn't quite find the sand. That can cause a lot of problems. That can cause an awful lot of problems at this circuit. Getting out too wide. However, it's just enough. It was just enough to give second place that uh, run. As we head through the first corner, it would be the other white alpha to the inside that uh, would get... In the end, sort of didn't want to fight that one too much. He could throw the car up the inside into the uh, sort of second and third corner there, but he's already under threat from a car behind. You've got to... You Sometimes you've got to, um, yeah, realise when it's better just to let the car go when you know that you're going to lose more time fighting with it and so on. For me, 
once again I was stuck in a massive battle. This for the lower parts of the top 10 and uh, it was, yeah, again, it was excellent, excellent fun. I was busy looking for a way past the car ahead and uh, slightly got surprised by a, a vehicle, the Red Alpha behind me, just dove up the inside. I, it was, yeah, one of those I was I was too busy focused on, on attacking and not worrying about defending left the door wide open. However, said Red Alpha was now having his own trouble trying to get ahead of the uh, car ahead of me. This is where you then have to try and pick which side is going to be quicker down this straight. Do you try to go to the outside for the uh, chicane or do you stick with the, uh, the inside? That is where I would go as the uh, red car a little bit quicker down the down the straights is a tad of a lock up from both me and the red and black car into there we would though make it through that uh, chicane cleanly as i've now got a massive massive run on the car ahead this would become my favorite of the overtaking spots try to go around the outside you're a little bit slow on the way in but i can get a fantastic run on the way out this time around though not quite not quite enough to draw alongside uh, when I realise the gap is going to quickly close. You just have to have that little bit of a lift and fall back into a line. Still got to be wary though, there were two cars behind me. This is at that stage where you want to go full attack, but I've already seen the cost of it as uh, swap places with the black and red car, but I hadn't actually made any progress through the uh, field. Said vehicle would struggle a little bit to keep up with uh, the group ahead. He would come under fire from the purple alpha uh, down towards that uh, first corner. Purple car would get the move done, although would run a little bit deep on the way through this chicane as we get a nice close-up the back of that purple car. However, it's very tough. Very tough indeed. You have to have a huge amount more grip if you want to try and go around the outside at uh, this corner. It's a very long, very off-camber, very nasty corner. Black and red car tries to find some space on the inside, but there's not much, not much room there to uh, to get a pass done. You end up bouncing across the curb, taking a very tight line. Again, is having a look up the inside. The purple car running that little bit wide, although you can sometimes get a good run off of the corner. And sure enough, that uh, purple car has got has tended to have the straight line speed on the vehicle behind and now he's got uh, another red Alfa Romeo for company in towards this uh, next turn. Yeah, again, again, midfield was very busy, as was uh, further towards the front. While the leader had managed to pull a gap to the rest of the uh, squabbling cars, this would become the battle for second place. The uh, white and purple car, significantly faster in a straight line, but the black and green, faster through the corners. So we'd have to try, you know, the white car would have to try and get far enough away that uh, when it came to the technical sections, the, uh, he could defend from the green car. However, running wide out of the chicane would uh, put the white vehicle in some trouble. Now, we had seen speed around the outside of that corner, and sure enough, the white vehicle was able to just make it awkward, keep his car in a position where the black and green vehicle wasn't able to make the most, essentially, of his uh, of his corner speed and as we round the final turn a little bit wide a little bit across the rumble strips perhaps uh, on the uh, sort of approach to that uh, final corner and then we have another long straight for the white car to uh, use it's slightly more power and we are only talking slightly more power there's not a huge amount that you can uh, can do with uh, with these vehicles in C class and sure enough we'll go flying up the inside but uh, has to have a little bit of a uh, check up on the brakes through that corner the green vehicle tries to uh, find his way past but has to leave some space it's not quite able to uh, fully complete the pass and then he sees the rumble strips on the outside and takes avoiding action which is uh, fair enough that the curbs around here are horrendously vicious uh, in all of that yeah still not able to uh, find a way past that uh, that white vehicle and the more they fight like that the more the group behind will come and uh, catch up to them even further back further down the order there was plenty of uh, close action going on this uh, white vehicle struggling a little bit on the outside not quite able to uh, carry as much speed as he thought through there as a blue car would have a great run down the back straight looking for a way past but uh, outside into this corner can be done we, we have seen it done a few times but uh, again you've got to uh, have a superior amount of grip not quite able to uh, get that pass done is the uh, blue vehicle but uh, yeah, I mean, that was that was well down. I think it was all about sort of 15th, 16th place. And, you know, still plenty of, of fight going on. It would be the white Bosch car that would go on to uh, take victory here at the uh, Bugatti circuit uh, by a fair, a fair margin with uh, a little bit of sliding out of the <laughs> final corner. 
Yeah, uh, I had to fight for it. I had to fight for it in the early stages, certainly. Once got to the leader, you saw the fight that was going on for second place. Was able to uh, to pull away. I think the black and green car in the end would uh, get the second ahead of the white vehicle. For me, though, uh, I would make a mistake and drop back behind the red alpha here. And I had, well, one lap. I knew where my car was fast towards the latter part of the race. The purple alpha Romeo had kept us honest throughout the latter stages of this one. I was fast through the chicane. And sure enough, the red car would go defensive. However, that didn't really bother me. Because I knew my car was good through these final few corners. I would try my luck this time much further alongside are these long, long sweeping corners. However, it does put me on the outside for the final turn. The alpha on the inside uh, breaks a tad early. actually hits the curve quite nastily that uh, gives me a bit of a bump. I end up out wide, however, get a lovely slingshot around this uh, final corner. It's a drag race towards the line, and I would get the position. The purple car very, very close behind us as well. Fantastic fun race. Fantastic fun race for a lot of cars, in fact, uh, in here. They, much like much like I said at Catalonia, there was so much going on. Trying to find where to look was uh, rather difficult. Uh, rather difficult indeed. Our final race, and we would head to the Laguna Seca circuit. As everyone would uh, fly their way into the first corner here. A uh, little bit of a bump but further back would send somebody into the tire bundles. But on the whole, we had some of the cleanest sort of first corners. Uh, plenty of vehicles were going two and three wide and so on, which you don't necessarily get away with in the a lot faster, a lot more difficult to uh, to drive cars as we, uh, yeah, would, would fight our way through these opening opening turns. Not quite as manic, perhaps that's, I think, a little bit more to do with the track than we have seen in uh, some of the some of the early races. We didn't quite have as, as many vehicles trying to fit three wide into these corners. That can also be quite a good thing at, uh, at times. Further back, I was very much in the uh, thick of things with, uh, with my Alpha, uh, while the Bosch car was once again trying to uh, look for ways up through the field. I was... Struggling. The all-wheel drive cars were struggling a little bit for speed. I had a huge, huge dive up the inside. While everybody was kind of busy checking up, avoiding one another, I was like, a little bit further back and could break up my normal point, which meant that I had a huge dive <laughs> up the inside. Wasn't really intending it, um, but uh, almost got alongside. I, I just lacked the straight line speed. Yeah, the all-wheel drive cars were struggling a little bit for pace on the whole. I think the rear-wheel drive ones are a little bit more difficult to build to get them to handle correctly, but if you do, they are slightly better cars. The all-wheel drive ones were struggling a tad, and yeah, I would gradually drop off the back of this group as they were continuing <laughs> to uh, fight very viciously for their positions as once more we have, you know, big groups of cars trying to go three wide into a corner you don't normally go three wide into. Just about make it through. Little bit, little bit of hip and shoulder going on there between the the blue car and the uh, orangey one. <laughs> but uh, everybody got out the other side in one piece. And it is the white and blue car here that is now under fire. The other blue vehicle going around the outside of the final turn. There's another, a very, very quick white car is uh, joined this group. Black and red cars in there. And the more they fight, that does actually tend to help me out as well. Try to bring me back up into the uh, group. The, uh, yeah, the, the pure blue car, if you like like was struggling with that straight line speed quicker than it had been in the opening race still not very fast though in a straight line and this this midfield continued to be uh, horrendously busy this black and blue vehicle now uh, keen to make it away had a poor start uh won a few cars to uh, get dumped down the order a little bit but was very very quick and keen to uh, make some passes into the corkscrew not quite going to work out even with these cars the overtaking had proved to be a bit easier in many ways and we'd seen so many overtakes in so many different positions even with these yeah the corkscrew is still a uh, place you've got to be mega brave if you are going to be uh, getting a pass done and everyone has to be mega aware of what's going on things can go quite badly wrong at the corkscrew uh, either way though it is a uh, fan I got distracted uh, there's a fantastic move around the uh, the outside there to uh, get the position. Yeah, very, very quick car, this one, able to dispatch. Dispatching fast cars uh, with, uh, with relative ease goes to show just uh, how quick that, uh, that vehicle was. I, once more, like I'd had at Catalonia, I was in battles constantly. Again, I don't think there was a lap. I wasn't attacking or defending or both at the same time here. The black and red car got himself into trouble on the exit. And we were going to go three wide now down the start-finish line. I, I was planning on going for a cutback on the yellow car, but uh, <laughs> the vehicle ahead ended up out in the weeds. I was more than happy 
to uh, make that a uh, twofer and uh, get myself up a couple of positions. Although, again, <laughs> immediately got to be aware there's two cars trying to get themselves to the inside of me. One did a little bit of rally cross on the inside. A blue vehicle had caught up to uh, join in the uh, battles. I was going to just about manage to uh, hold on to the position. The yellow car still sniffing, still looking for a way past. Don't worry about the ghost cars. That is the joys of Forza replays. And uh, we would get the position uh, eventually, I say eventually secured, it, it, nothing was ever very secured for long in this race. At the front, it was apparently white was the colour for the Alfa Romeos. That was the colour that worked with them as the <laughs> four of the leaders were driving white Alfa 155s. And uh, yeah, there was all sorts of all sorts of battling going on up here. The Bosch car would uh, great pass out of turn one, get uh, better run out of the corner, able to out accelerate the uh, the leader at the time, and would go on to take a victory here. It was once more a uh, very, very good race around here. But Fuff on the final lap, we'll see a couple of second and third would dump themselves down the order with, I think it's a blue and orange car would work his way up into second place here. You can see <laughs> the group behind were still jostling for position. Yeah, again, a fantastic, fantastic race. Once more, there would be a, an even closer finish. Uh, this time, not quite involving me. It was the cars ahead of me. We fought the entire race, basically. Uh, I made a few silly mistakes that dumped me to the back of this crew, but <laughs> you can see, trying to fight my way back past the uh, yellow car on this final lap. However, the black and red vehicle was coming under increasing fire from a very, very quick blue car as we head up towards the final turn. Everyone is uh, going a little bit attacking on the way in, but if you dive too much to the inside, you end up taking a very tight line. You make your car very slow over the corner. That's exactly what the blue vehicle did. He had great acceleration, but was struggling to get out of that final corner as we crossed the line. It was ridiculously close. I had a good run on the yellow car, but couldn't quite do anything about it. It was quite close between me and the yellow vehicle. However, nothing as close as between these two. So we know from previous experience, Forza counts a car as finished as when the front wheels cross the line. The wheel has to cross the line. Doesn't matter about the splitter and so on. And well, the red car is just just about across the uh, across the line the blue vehicle is a couple of millimeters back now because the straight here or the, the finish line is on a slight curve the way that the red car is angled the front right wheel is crossing the line a smidge before the blue car we are talking tiny tiny fractions between the pair of them one of the closest, one of the closest photo, and we've had a few close photo finishes, I've had a few close photo finishes of late as well, that one is ridiculously, ridiculously close between the, uh, the two vehicles, yeah, these were an awful, awful lot of fun, the, the Alphas, as I said, are not particularly good in most classes, I think there's A class or something, you can get half decent, but even then, they tend not to be as fast as your other options, however, when you race an entire field of them, it does make for some truly, truly brilliant racing. I think a combination of, you can't have crazy powerful outfits, they just don't get the power. The, the PI will shoot up far too quickly. It meant that everything was relatively good handling, meant that uh, everyone could race relatively closely, and the cars weren't massively fast, so uh, if you made a little mistake, you could get away with it, on the most part. Uh, yeah, they were incredibly exciting. I think probably one of the best, one of the best West Kings certainly we've had in a while for just, pure chaos going on at all times. Good, The good kind of chaos, not the everyone crashing, the kind where everyone's overtaking each other. So, yeah. That, though, is going to be it for this week's Versus Community. The next one is going to be on the 13th of April. We are going to be on Forza Horizon 3, and we're going to be racing with A-Class front-wheel drive cars at Blizzard Mountain. So, yes, you will be needing the Blizzard Mountain DLC to uh, take part in that. That is going to be it from me. Oh, and if you want to sign up, of course, then you can go to our forums. Link will be in the description. That will be it from me, though. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.